All right, I thought we'd discuss a little bit breath stops again. And, you know, it's very important that we decide what it is we're trying to do when we start doing this. Uh, we're really trying to develop the whole idea of stopping the breath. And stopping the breath is a strange expression. It was invented by, by Lily Lehmann, right? And she called it Atemstauen. Or the, and she called the, the, the place where you stop the breath, which in her case was on her chest, she said she called it the Atemstau or the Staupunkt. Uh, Stau in German is a, a dam and a river. It's a Staudamm because it stops the flow of the river. Uh, a traffic jam is a, is a, a Verstauung, a, a, a Verkehrsverstauung, a traffic stopping up. And so she used that word Stauen to describe what she did with her breath when she sang. And uh, then she named it breath stop, right? So we want to figure out what in the world are these singers who use this technique. Uh, one of the oldest exercises in the history of singing was to hold a candle flame in front of your mouth and don't let it move. Well, people go crazy. The doctors go crazy when you do that because they think, no, no, the air has to move through the vocal cords or they can't vibrate. Well, then fine, it must have to do with how, what a tiny amount of air actually we, we let or send through our vocal cord. The edges of our vocal cords have to vibrate. So, to send a lot of air like that, simply, simply brings up the chest register and the voice doesn't carry and doesn't sound. Uh, and one, uh, I sang as a bass and all the, at the university, uh, and, uh, and I had this great young bass voice that was complimenting me all the time. Oh, what a beautiful, important, very important bass voice that nobody could hear me. Every time one instrument played, I was covered and you couldn't wear his he Did he leave? <laughs> right. but, so, the idea is. There are certain, there's a certain kind of resonance that carries like a rocket and sounds like a bomb in the back of the theater. And there's another kind, although it sounds big in a room, doesn't go anywhere. So we want to find out what this uh, breath stop business is really all about and how we decide where to use, how to use it and where to place it. Now, we've heard the word place the voice before, place the resonance before. So today we're going to do it. We're going to do, we're going to start with the breath stop. Here we go. We're going to go, pa, pa. How do I say that pa without moving the breath, without moving the paper? Same thing as if you have a candle flame, it's the same thing as a candle flame. So I go, pa, 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 pa. So Papa Lotte held that, that handkerchief in front of his, like, in front of him like that in all his concerts and they asked him why and he said, well, if it moves, I know I'm not singing well. So we go, pa. I'm, I'm singing breathy. I'm losing my air. So I have to go. So the paper does not move. The next question is then, if once I've established I'm not going to move the candle flame, I'm not going to move the paper, the cleaner. This is tissue paper. Um, and you want something very fragile, so if you do have a little leak, it does show. Um, so now I'm going to say, where do I stop the breath? Well, this one, uh, pa, if I go, pa, pa, I'm stopping it right on my lips. Pa, pa. Well, they used, at one point in the great Neapolitan school, De Lucia, Fernando De Lucia was the king of that school, and everybody said he was, you know, the greatest of the bell of tenors. And he, he sort of, I don't know if he invented it, but he certainly developed it. And even Caruso used that for part of his career, especially the lyric part of his career early. Um, but the idea is this pa, which is leaking air, when I stop it, pa, I stop it on the lips. So they would say in Italian, il tono fiorisce sulle labbra, the voice flowers on the lips. So I would go, la, una furtiva lagrima, la, so the breath stopped here and does not leak. Now, if I bypass this and I go, pa, oh, and I put it in the back of my neck. Now I'm doing Joan Sutherland's famous hook in the back of her neck, or Frank, uh, Franco Corelli's uh, behind the, the glottal stroke. The glottal stroke is, ah, 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 ah. If I go behind it, uh, my breath stop moves from ah there to Right. 
The next one would be someone, every one of these has a name, mostly tenor names, because I'm a tenor, so I always worried about what they did, but a few of them were singers, because so, certainly Sutherland was famous for the back of her deck, the way she sang the back of her deck. But even Caruso said the olive vowel is very far back and low in the throat. So what was he talking about? He's talking about the breast stop being back here someplace, all right? Now, uh, Jan Kipur, the famous Polish tenor, who sang the first tune uh, in uh, England, he did Kalaf, of course, and his breast stop was up here. Pa, 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 pa. Now I've got the breast stop right on against the top of my skull. Pa, la, 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 la. So remember the lips. La. Remember the back of the neck. La. And remember this. La. Now let's talk about Alfredo Krauss for a minute. Alfredo Krauss had two breath stops. One of them was on the tip of his nose. So I go, pa, pa, la, 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 right? And it really is stopped on the, on, on the point of my nose. Now, I don't have a very big nose. A lot of you don't. Some of you have long, beautiful, wonderful, pointy noses, so you can use it. Uh, Alfredo had a big, uh, Krauss had a big, uh, long, pointy nose, and it worked like, and he went to that Tamaño school and wherever it was in Spain, and that technique uh, was passed down over the generations from Tamaño himself. So we don't know who did what and why, but we do know that Alfredo, I know it personally, he was a friend of mine, and uh, I know personally that he used this one all the time. So I go, Pa, 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 and an offshoot of that one is to put the tip of your nose against a mirror and try to sing without making any fog. I never could do it. I always got a fog patch that big, and finally I got a small one. I said, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm getting it. And then I looked down below, and sure enough, there was a big fog patch down below because the air was coming out of my nose and pointing downward. So when you work on the mirror, if you do the mirror, be sure that you don't have any fog patches anywhere, and uh, good luck. I never could. I've had a few students that could do it without any fog at all. I don't know how they did it, but maybe they had longer noses than me. That might help. I'm a little bit farther away. So maybe that, uh, they were a little bit farther away, so maybe that's the whole secret. Anyway, you can see there are several of, them, several of these breath stops up here. And... Uh, I began to realize, so I'd get confused when I was a student, and I would ask all these great singers, where do you, where do you sing? And they would, a lot of them would talk about breath control or, uh, or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't sing breathy. There were a lot, of talk, a lot of talk about breathing and breathing and breathing. Every great singer I've ever talked to talk about breathing one way or another. And uh, a lot of them used different, different ideas. And I was confused as a student. I thought, well, which one is right? Am I supposed to do that one or this one or that one? And the truth is, it's the principle of not leaking air that matters. Uh, a lot of them, like I just mentioned, uh, one, one, two, three, four singers. And don't forget that John McCormick and Georges Thiel, the famous French tenor, T-H-I-L-L, -L, for those of you who don't, uh, are not familiar with his name, look him up. He's a fabulous tenor. And he and the famous John McCormick, the great Irish tenor, both sang... Uh, the way De Lucia taught them, and and De Lucia, of course, was the king of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, the tone flowers on the lips. So both McCormick and Teal made fabulous careers singing right here, right. And Alfred Pickerberry also sang right here. So uh, you get to know sort of through rumor, through talk, through uh, witnesses, through friends, through writing over a lifetime. I'll be 84 uh, about a month from now, March 15th. Actually, today's I think the the 20th or something, 21st, it's 21st, today's 21st of February, uh, 2022. So I'm getting up there, and uh, it's been a long time ago when I was talking to these great singers. It was, what, 65 years ago. So uh, this is the kind of stuff they talked about. And these breath stops, once you get the idea, the breath is on its way out, and you stop it. Or it's on its way in, and you stop it. For instance, speaking of, uh, of uh, Franco Corelli and Jerome Hines, they use this one, what's called the Muller Maneuver, and they went, <gasps> and they did the hiccup to stop. Where's the hiccup? 
Well, if I stop my breath there, I'm actually singing something in the back of my neck, and I'm going, No, how are you today? See? So I can sing in the back of my neck, I can sing anywhere if the darn breath doesn't leak. And if it leaks, you, you, you're fouled up, then you have to hurr and do all, all kinds of strange uh, things in your throat. This way, I don't do anything in my throat. I say, hi, hi, how are you? So the idea is to use the breath stop, and they're all over the place. Now, Franco Coelho used this one. I'm uh, not Franco Coelho, Mario Delmonico. Mario Delmonico used this one. He went, he used to demonstrate like that. I studied with him almost six months right there. So I go, no. better than the other. La, 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 la. That famous held tenor Max Lorenz who sang all the big Wagner, huge uh, Wagner parts like Tannhäuser and Tristan and Siegfried in Germany during the Second World War had a breast up right here. La, 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 la. It's a little brighter, a little bit ah, but he had a huge voice, so it, his voice didn't sound as whiny as mine does. And uh, they all sound great. Now let's talk about somebody really odd. Uh, I mentioned, uh, well, first of all, let's do Alfredo Krauss. I mentioned he had two breath stops, the tip of his nose. The other one was, he said he put the tip of his finger, lined it up like that, between his voice and the third balcony. And then he stopped his breath right on the tip of his finger. So he'd go like that. <laughs> can you believe you can stop your breath in midair? <laughs> he did it. He's the one that convinced me that it can be done. Uh, then we get into what we call a remote uh, breath stops. I mean, I've got, uh, let's say, you know, you got to find something around your, your environment. Let's say uh, uh, I have a doorknob over there on the other side of the room. <laughs> I stopped my breath on that doorknob. The audience loves that. If you sort of pander to them in different parts of the theater, and let's say you look up the third balcony, there's somebody up there you know. So you sing, uh, you, I, can, I can project my breath stop up in the balcony and go, la, 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 la. See what I mean? Once we get the concept of what the breath stop really means, and uh, it, it, it even stop is a misnomer because it doesn't stop completely. There's this minute stream that won't even move a piece of uh, uh, tissue. La, it's like I'm doing nothing. You know, I'm, it's like I'm, nothing's coming out except sound. Now, if I move on down, I get into a, a different, uh, really a different group of singers. There's, by the way, while we're on this one, on the tip of the finger in midair, uh, one of the most famous tenors, uh, probably in history, was Aureliano Pertile, who was a big dramatic tenor in La Scala during the Second World War. And his breath stop, believe it or not, was right in the center of his mouth. Right, between his teeth, right in the middle, between the corners of his mouth, right in the middle, and all the way to the front, right there. You might call that a member of the family of breath stops that occur in the mouth nose region. See, nasal is bad because nasal doesn't carry. If the nose is open, I'm going, and if I stop my breath there, nobody's going to hear me. So whatever these do, they, they do require, as Caruso said in his book, never say into the nasal cavity. So we've really got to avoid the nasal cavity being open. We've got to close it. Some say you're just saying Bob, Bob, Dob, and keep their voice like Leonard Warren saying what's what he called the pre-sneeze. No! It goes to sound like a bomb in, in the Metropolitan Opera. He had a huge, gorgeous, incredible, big baritone voice. And no. Uh, 
you know, I was always picking everybody's brain, so I heard a lot of this. The only one who wouldn't talk to me was Cesare Cieppi and Cornel McNeil. And I asked McNeil, he said, why don't you talk to the young singer? He said, because he might tell you something wrong and it might hurt you. We can't take the responsibility. But most of the singers will talk forever about singing, right? Um, anyway, if we go on with this, you know, we've already done all these. Now let's get down to something a little more traditional, which was uh, the, the sternum lean. Uh, Tetrosini used the sternum lean. Uh, even Lily Lehman used across her chest, and she stopped the breath across her chest, she said. Right? And Pantile, as part of what he did with this, he said he also kept his breath pressed against his pectoral muscles. So I go, la, 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 la. Get the idea? Whatever you do, the breath must not leak. It must stop, always must stop. And everything I do, it won't move the paper. La, 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 la. See? By the way, I've warmed up a note today, and uh, it's a good way to warm up. It sort of lets my uh, everything, I don't know, it sort of gets everything going, and uh, the blood starts flowing, and first thing you know, I will might even be able to sing a high note one day, maybe a week or a month from now, I'll find out. Right? Anyway, the idea is you keep on moving down, you see Berlin did right there. And some of the singers actually use, something we'll do, and we'll talk about another tape, but they use an accent method that they go, Hello! So they actually press the breath against the sternum. And if they do that, Melchior did that, Lao Tzu Melchior did that, and he'd sing, I shall say he's me and a father, his friend is an excellent lord. And that's more an apodjo technique. It's a leaning of the breath against a specific place to get it to, again, stop. If I do that, it doesn't leak. I'm sure it me a little All of these do not leak air. This is the number one rule. Your uh, breath that is stopped and not leaking is the best friend of the singer. And leaky breath is the worst friend of the singer. And you go up and hit one note wrong and let the air slip and come out, and damage your nerve, that's what I'm with Franco Covelli. He sent me, uh, you know, damage your nerve, he couldn't sing, he lost his upper, his upper voice. Uh, you cannot let air ever suddenly, especially under pressure, man, these big, big dramatic voices, and all the pressure they're, they're using to sing a high note, and uh, then the breath slips, and it comes loose, it goes poop, and hits you in the throat. So it's very dangerous. The, the breath stop method is still probably the safest uh, concept the singers have ever had. Anyway, if I sing here, I go, La, 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 and all I'm doing is this, pa, pa, and I stopped right there, pa, pa, la, 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 my breath just stopped here. Now, it's going down. Some singers sing in the epigastric reason region. Uh, they sing sort of right here in between uh, the sternum and the navel, and they go, pa, pa, well, do I want to sing that big all the time? I don't know. We have to work it out and see what happens. If I'm strong enough, imagine doing that for four hours, four hours on a whack, Every day, every night, it's the worst thing all day. You know, singers, some singers are stronger. I'm an old geezer now, so I don't have that kind of stamina that I did when I was young. And uh, that's why I don't actually... <laughs> well, maybe I'll give a concert one day. I'll celebrate my 100th birthday by giving a big concert. Okay, we'll see. If I'm here, I'm going to do it whether I fall down or not. <laughs> maybe that'll kill, kill me, finish me off, right? And then, okay, so let's go below the epigastric region. Now, Pavarotti always talked about how he leaned his breath on his navel. Okay, here we go. Pa! Pa! That's right at my navel. La, 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 That means my breath stopped. My controlling factor of how I 
press the breath and hold it somewhere, is way down there on my navel. And remember that every action is an optic reaction. So there's a, if you think of like a seesaw, your breath is going like this all the time. So if I'm leaning here, it's about an angle, about it's coming out of my lower back, it's about like that. But if I bring it down and put it on my sternum, all of a sudden it's getting like that. See, if I get it on my navel, I'm like that. Uh, you, you, can, you can decide for yourself whether Pavarotti's voice was as beautiful as UC Burling's or Geely's or Caruso's. He was a great singer, but was his voice as rich in color because his angle of lean that way, which means this wasn't so deep. And then we have Mario Delmonico, whose angle was about, because he sang right here, and his angle of his, of his breath was about like that. So we had a tremendous, unbelievable, powerful sound, but maybe also not as so beautiful, you know? And then Corelli used the back of the neck. So Mitsu he was leaning this way, see? So he's going like that. So the breath column leans out a little bit in the front. Very, very much a, a, a epigastrium region. La, 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 la. Why not? In other words, you can move all over the body and all over the place. You can even stop your breath in the third balcony once you learn to use the breast up as a concept. Uh, I haven't found a better term. That was Lou Lehman's term, and uh, I haven't found a better, a better way to describe it. It's exactly what I do. I stop my breath someplace, and when I do, I maintain a kind of a pressure there from my lower back, if it's in front, from my front, if it's in my lower back. Now, this brings up another singer, Krista Ludwig. Krista Ludwig used to lean back between her shoulder blades and do that. Pa! Pa! And I can sing perfectly well with my with my my lean of my breath, as they used to call it. The breath stop right there between my shoulder blades. So these breath stops that people use that have been successful for them, they were so confusing for me when I was a young student because I didn't know which one I was supposed to do. And the truth is, I ended up sort of using them all at one, at one time or another, depending how I felt and what I was singing and how many high notes. Don, Don Carlo Verdi's got 49 B flats and 9 B naturals and about 500 A's and 1,000 G sharp, and he's like this all night long. It's about four and a half hours. I mean, it is a real chore to sing that. And you, know, you won't hear many people sing it well. I heard, uh, other than myself, <laughs> I have a tape of it. I got through it. But the one who really sang the way you would love to sing it was UC Burling. And he's the only one I ever heard who could, who could do sort of all the things that that role requires. <clears throat> and then, uh, so we go on down. Finally, uh, you have from below the navel, you have about that far below the navel, you have uh, halfway to the pubic bone, and you're about that light. So you can sing right in the center of your abdomen also. So if I do this, see? Pa. Pa. I stopped it right there. And I, once I find that breath stop, I maintain the pressure of my breath on that spot without letting anything leak. Uh, one way to, 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 to well, it's, it's hard to it's not describe some other things that happen. We'll go through these. Once you have these, then everything else gets a little bit easier.